Welcome to the games. You are now watching Around the Verse here, and here we go. Let's watch it. September 20th. Oh. Oh. Okay, can I say first off that I'm actually not very impressed by this so far. It looked a little janky to me the way that they moved, but I know that when I play the game, it doesn't have that kind of jankiness to it. Sometimes it does, but most times it's a little bit more fluid than that. Yeah, you kill that rock, says lady. You kill it. You show it who's boss. <laughs> you show it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I like that one. Okay, enter. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. The Prospector, which we gave away two months ago. Our new giveaway right here. Let your friends know. Giveaway on to games. Save a Raven. Go to that. Bring your friends. Rock lives matter, says Deuce. Smoking rock is new. Look at three dimensional lines. Hey, we're prospectors. Mining rocks. Hey, hey, doll, how you doing, dude? I'm, I'm in the middle of the sea. We love to mine rocks. Actually, just to let you guys know, industry is very important and should be important in this game. And the people that do the industry should actually get paid the value of what it is that they're doing in the game. Hence, therefore, there should have some type of market where it would be a little bit more uh, player controlled. I know I've said this a lot and gotten a lot of heat for it. But player controlled markets tend to value things a lot more real, a, a lot realer than, uh, you know, the NPC. Although some would tell you the other way around. And those types of people would also be fine if artificial intelligence totally took over the world, just like Skynet. And back to the show. It does, David. It does. It really does. Watch out for the dinosaur! <laughs> Damon. That's so you're totally right, Dames. I like the commercial. I like the commercial. It's a funny commercial. It was a funny commercial. I'll give it props for that was that was very well. That was And that was the winning entry in our recent Misk Prospector commercial contest. Yes, very cool. Congrats Who did to that? creators Narian N7, Ozgard, and Jin Tenzo. Excellent work. Yes, Narian O7. Skin tard, skin tard. I don't know. I didn't catch that second one. I, I feel like that's a really weird name. And Golginzo, Jinzi, Sakashumi. I'm not quite sure those names. I'm not quite sure, but they did a good job. So congratulations, you three. I think you did a great job. We all do. All that needed was the Trex for at the end, dude. And next time you guys do a commercial, listen to Damon. He's absolutely right. There needs to be a dinosaur in that. Just letting you know. Now let's watch and get serious. Another episode of Around the Verse. I'm Eric Karen Davis. And I'm Sandy Gardner. This week, we'll look at Moby Glass app improvements, mining the moons of Arc Corp, and building out the Stanton system. Plus, Jared stops by for a ship pipeline checkup. But first, let's go back to that Prospector commercial. Recently, we launched a contest to see who could come up with the best commercial for MISC's dedicated mining vessel. The community team had a really rough time determining the top three and- Okay, that's cool. Like, that's very cool. They use footage from Levski. I wanna watch that commercial. Where's that at? That looks cool. I am developing a story in Star Citizen that's gonna be very similar to this. I'm not gonna say the title, but I'm waiting on female characters because my story that I've written Demands female characters. So stay tuned to the games for that when the VoIP and the VoIP hit. <laughs> she a boy again. Sounds like something Woody Allen would say. Entries know. having received a supernova right of stellar submissions. Ooh. Yeah, this contest really shines some starlight on the amazing creative talents of our players. Make sure you head to Spectrum to check out the two runners up in all their glory and take a peek at the other great submissions.
Moving into right. development updates. Well, I'll go there continues after I'm done integrating streaming. Navigation capabilities <laughs> and route lists into players' Moby Glass. Right now, devs are figuring out how best to indicate your travel distance and how much longer you can travel along your selected route without running out of fuel. This is but a potential exploration of the earliest versions of this mechanic in the Persistent Universe. Let's go to Rob Reininger for more. Route planning is the ability for the players to go into the star map and select any destination in the star map. And what it does is it automatically creates like a highway to that destination. Um, think like Google Maps. You can pick any place in the world. It will automatically tell you where to turn, what points you need to go through in order to get to that destination. So it's very similar to that. Right here you can see a concept that I worked up about a month ago. This system will allow you to set a final destination and will automatically plot your route uh, around various stellar objects. Additionally, it will show you a list of uh, all of the waypoints in your route. Here we All right, waypoints being set on your route. Now, are the waypoints areas that are like the areas that are kind of what it would be considered dead space? Mark one says, one of my concerns about SE is, with this level of detail and feature, simulated gravity, scale distance, etc., how can, uh, how can we manage to produce enough? I think that's what you're trying to say. Sorry about that. Um, how can we manage to produce enough space for a decade? That is what we were just talking about. I don't know if you just entered here, Mark One, but welcome to the Around the Verse, dude. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, we were we actually we just talked about exploration and how important it was that there was 60% of the fan base that actually signed up because of wanting to, you know. Uh, explore in the game that's why they put the pledge in and now we're also talking about exploration and the amount of space that you can actually go to so this is something that I'm very interested in watching right here because it has a lot to do with exploration and don't be sorry don't be sorry uh, it's gonna take 10 minutes or more to fly planets to planet in one system okay okay but like what about the areas and let me point uh, I wish that my finger could go through to the I, it might it might Ah, everything's getting cut off. Ah, God, my arm. Oh, give me my arm back. Okay. The, the space in between. The space between. Can we go to all of that? Can we go to all of that? That's a good question, right? Because when we initially were talking in 2015, long ago, that's what we wanted. We wanted it all, right? Because that was a dream. So I think right now what they're telling us is, is that there are set waypoints and set conditions, like go from A to B to C to D. Um, you know, you can, you can quantum drive, you can quantum drive to these points, but Damon, what he's saying is that these are all fixed points. And because that they're all fixed points, perhaps we're not able to go to this space between and don't make me sing it again. So let's keep watching here. I think it's very important for people that just entered here. We're having a giveaway for a, a Saber Raven, ladies and gentlemen. Ha oh, ha Thank you, Mark One. Thank you for the subscription. Good timing. Good timing. Mark One, professional timing. Cheers to you, Mark One. That was a perfectly timed subscription. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and there is the giveaway, by the way. Uh, Damon says, we wanted it all because we were pr uh, promised it all. Slowly, they are attracting those things. And I think that's just part of the game development process, process Damon. So I'm not going to be like completely cold and like motherfuckers, blah, 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 and just like cut them off. You know what I mean? There's going to be like a phase of design that's going to be limited to the point in which it is that's going to offer us everything. I think this is the type of team that will give us what we want. But again, at what pace? It's a good question. You know, because everybody has a limit, even even the old timers here that I know that are good friends with me, you know, uh, and I'm not going to name them because I don't want to call them out for being old. It's not a nice thing to do, uh, but I respect the wisdom of my elders and the elders that 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 are in Star Citizen are like, hey, I can wait. I can wait, which is funny because then I think to myself, you can't wait <laughs> not compared to me. Because I have a lot more life than you, generally speaking. Well, I don't know. I could get run over by a bus tomorrow. But just numbers-wise, I probably am going to live longer. So I can wait longer than you. But I'm not able to wait as long as the person who's very close to not being able to wait at all. That is 
the craziest thing that I've ever heard in my life before. Let's continue with this particular around the verse. We have uh, this red section, which kind of hey Nori, what's going on? Where you might Welcome run out of street, fuel dude. if you have insufficient fuel to complete the whole trip, and then that is kind of represented over here in the in the master waypoint by waypoint list or jump by jump list. The green section indicates the uh, distance you have let yet to travel. And uh, the gray area over here represents the distance that you have already completed. With your little dude located right here, <laughs> showing right. where you are uh, overall in the current journey. And so over here on this screen, we have some of that work in progress <laughs> happening Damon. right here. It's so funny, dude. And so we set a, a route oh, to Oh, okay, Nori's got something. And so as you can see, computer. this screen looks significantly different than this one. I mean, one of the things that I'm, I am definitely looking forward to uh, with no. regards to the system is that I've been playing Star Citizen for years before oh, I came on the you, team. Thank you, Dory. Thank you, dude. Uh, and I've only been here a couple months. Um, but I'm eager, I, I've always been as a user, eager to see updates to the star map. And uh, I know that there are a lot of other people out there like that. So I'm really I, looking I, forward yeah. to getting... I agree with him. Like, I've actually been looking forward to getting out there. We just talked about that. We just talked about that on our first Around the Verse review. How, like, it would be so great for new places and new eye candy and something new. Uh, and, and there's going to be. So we're going to have, um, what is it, Hurston come into effect. And we're going to be able to land there on Lauraville, I believe it. I believe is the name. And we'll be able to explore a little bit more. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I hope that in CitizenCon... They're going to put that as the showcase, like a new place to land, like something that's very important because I think it's important to keep, uh, you know, the hype train is the hype train, right? Let's be real. Uh, but like in order to keep the momentum going, I think what's important is that they, they do something at the Citizen Con. That they give us like an Easter egg that's large, that cracks open and is bountiful. I think that needs to happen. I'm just, I think that needs to happen. One day somebody is going to remind Sig not to forget exploration. And that's what we were talking about at the very beginning of the video. I think I'm going to, I'm going to cut this up two different ways when I put this on my YouTube stream, DY, because we were just talking about exploration and we're talking about the space between uh, the space between God. Stop it. Stop it. DG, you're talking in third person. Don't sing about that song anymore. Dave Matthews is the devil. So we. <laughs> What we were talking about earlier, see, that just got me off my train of thought. You see what that, you see what happens? That song is the devil. It is evil. Citizen Khan, thank you so much, Nori. It's important that they have something to keep it motivated, to keep the momentum going. Momentum. That sound like Dr. Disrespect. Momentum. <laughs> Citizen Khan better blow everybody's mind. That's exactly right, Nori. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. They will lose the whales. I think they're going to start losing some of the old timers, and that's why I started talking about it. I think they're going to start, but they have to. They have to. Now that they bungled it up and put it on a Wednesday, and I can't stand that people are talking out there, and they're like, oh, well, Wednesday is the traditional day. And it's like, no, dude. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, don't plan this on a day everybody's working. Do it on a on a weekend. And then, and then I, when I said that, I heard people go, well, they could, they can't because they got the weekend before and the weekend after schedule. That's that's the voice. That's the voice that I hear when when people are telling me this shit, right? And I'm like, well, then they should have done it way ahead of time and not had any conflicting schedule if they knew what the actual physical date of Citizen Con is, so that they could have scheduled it last year. You know, they needed to do this right. They need to do this right, and they need to stop bungling up. And that's the that's really Chris on Chris's shoulder. Even the correspondence that came out. Where he had put in there, hey, this is my fault. I didn't know everybody would be upset, blah, 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 right? It's because we're past $200 million support now, right? So it's a little bit different now. We're getting a little bit more detailed. We're getting a little bit more skeptical. And it's smart to. It's smart to. Don't let people tell you that you're being a troll. Don't let people tell you, you know, that being skeptical is a bad thing. It's not. Being a scammerino is a bad thing. Being the people over are like on one complete extreme of the, of the fence yelling scam and it's never going to come out, that's extreme. Those types of people, ignore those fucking types of people. The other types of people you ignore are the white knights. We talked about this in our community as well. We talked about the people that are like sponsored, right, by Intel through the connections made at Last Citizen Con <laughs> where Chris had talked to the Intel dude. And 
All the Optanes came with the Saber Raven. By the way, Saber Raven giveaway. <laughs> Good plug here. Go to it. Go to it. Get your Saber Raven. Go get it. I don't know why you're here watching me right now. You need to go over there and get involved in that giveaway. We're going to be calling a winner the mid mid October two hundred dollar prize two hundred dollar prize. Show me some promises in the game because you had them in the roadmap and finally coded it into the game. Says Jeff, that is what will motivate the community and blow people away. Ding ding ding! We have a winner. That's really important. You know, when it comes down to it, stability. We talked about this in the community. We talked about this at the very beginning of the year, March, in March of this year. Everybody in the, the games community was talking about optimization and performance. We said that. We coined that phrase. The optimization and performance shit that you're hearing was because of this channel and the discussion that was had on this channel. And optimization and uh, performance became the new fidelity. It became the new fidelity. That's, that's what we're in right now. So the optimization and the performance, it's important. It's important that people understand in order for people to get interested, like Jeff had just mentioned, there has to be a stability to it. There has to ha it has to have a higher level of stability, period. Anyway, back, back to the around the verse. Holy shit. So sorry. Lots of tangents right there. That's why you watch me. Feedback about the functionality aspects that we're putting in. Um, and how they're received, what kind of changes we can make to make this a really solid system. Now work also continues on adding multiple chat group functionality to the MobiGlass, which will add to the social and group experience in the PU. Here we see explorations of Walla, one of the moon's no worries, Jeff. that no we worries, saw dude. early concept art for a couple of weeks ago. These icy formations have led to discussions of new mining types beyond the ship-based mechanics that are currently in-game. Yeah, it's oh. too early to confirm how these visual cues will inform new gameplay mechanics, of course. New gameplay, uh, new gameplay mechanics with crystals being able to be mined directly. Interesting. Different. We know that we can mine uh, the stars for fuel with the, with the star fare. We know that. Uh, we know that we can mine rocks. And now we've got these crystals here. And you, you got to think to yourself, like, two things, I think, when I see this. One is if the rocks have the minerals in them and I'm mining the rocks, then what are these things? Are these just natural mineral deposits and how then can I mine them? They don't know yet. They haven't designed it yet. But you see, they're putting it in the game. So this is what I'm trying to tell people that are t that are that are on the on the on the side of the spectrum that are the scammerinos that are telling us that the game is never coming out. Like they're they're designing things that are going to be put into the game at a later date. Like they're always pushing forward, and they will always have new content. It's the speed, it's the rate, it's at the rate that it comes to us that's the real problem. And that, and then we talked about that earlier. So if you missed this and you're just joining. You're going to watch, uh, watch this video on YouTube later tonight, and we talk about a hell of a lot. The other side of the spectrum, like I said, again, are the white knights, and you don't listen. Like, you have to be, you have to be balanced. You can't, if you're in one camp or the other and you identify with those camps, you have to realize that you're just playing the identity politics game. You have to be an individual, and you have to look at this, right? Right now, I'm of the mind. Star Citizen's coming out. I'm going to wait a while. Things are going to be pushed back. I'm not going to like it. But I'm in. I was in when it started. I'm still in when it's here. I've had my ups and my downs. But you got to have a rational mind. Rational mind. The second you start watching people and, and it's just like they start talking one way about the game no matter what happens. You got you to be a little bit wary. Um, they make more money not finishing the game than they will finishing the game. And we're going to talk. We've talked about this too on the channel, Damon. We've talked about that as well, about the ship cycle. We've talked about that. I keep telling myself I'm going to make a video on it. Uh, but it's, it's kind of redundant, you know, because we've talked about it in the past. And, you know, what happens when the ships are now available in game for credits? You just cut off your entire head because that is the revenue stream. They may, I was thinking of entitling a video, Damon, why finish this game? <laughs> because, like really, the second they finish it, 
So they're going to have to find substitutions for the revenue stream. Very important. Um, it's better not to fit. Right, Nori. Right, right, right. So, all right, all right. Let's let's get back to this. This is the longest review ever to date on the channel. I don't think so. I talk all the time. Yes, of course, but it's fun to see how our designers key off the conceptual efforts of the environmental art teams. When we add new planets, moons, and other that celestial looks bodies that looks, into the that game looks world, killer. there are tons of different things to consider. Yes, there are. It isn't just as easy as plunking oh. a planet into Stanton's orbit. Everybody say hello. Hello and thank you. Welcome to the family, 2000. Tell them about the giveaway, Schnozbot. Schnozbot, tell them about the giveaway. Hello, who? Hastier 2000, welcome to the channel. You might want to go there and get yourself a raven. Play like, yeah. here. Back to the Rotherverse review. Here all the gods. <laughs> Orbit. Multiple teams must collaborate to make sure that the design works from both artistic and logistical standpoints. Let's check in with Luke Presley for more on the process of building out a solar system. So when we started building out Stanton proper, um, we realized that the first thing we had to do was agree on scale. There are maybe technical limitations on how big you can build planets. Maybe art would like the moons to look more epic or the sun to look... Because you've got to remember that the star is art's gorgeous, primary man. light for the entire Absolutely level. But gorgeous. it can't just be an art piece because you've got to fly around it. It has to be consistent across the levels. The way we did that was by basically recreating our solar system using all the various scales. <laughs> so we ended up with planets and the distances between everything being one tenth scale and moons being one sixth scale so moons are bigger and suns themselves are just one to one scale so when you say on mercury you'll feel like you're right next to the sun so what you'll notice in the stanton system is that the sun is maybe twice as big as it was before crusader has shrunken a little bit but You'll, what you'll really notice is all, with all the new stuff, like the first time that we, you've seen a planet and you, you're uh. seeing the sun through an actual thick atmosphere, you're seeing its moons orbiting it, these things hopefully appearing a little, you know, the sci-fi kind of Star That's Wars what's kind of scale as they go around, rather than the little dot that they might, you know, should be. Thank you, thank you, dude. Jared is back Welcome in the, the family, studio man. and geared up with a Somebody ship throw him a Discord pipeline link. update. Let's Somebody see what throw, he's got uh, 2000 a Discord link. Hey everyone, Disco here, back from his European adventure with another semi weekly dose of ship updates for you. To start things off, the F-8 Lightning. Prior to the UE Navy, well, it got an update this week. Now, Chris Smith right, and right, Nori, studio right. stepped away from his work on the 300 series for just a little bit to make updates necessitated by recent changes to the enter and exit animation templates, primarily of which included, you know, raising the pilot position up within the cockpit. Now, you're not going to see the fruits of this change in the Persistent Universe until after the ship makes its debut in the upcoming Squadron 42, but I'll take any excuse I can to showcase one of the more. Wait a second. Let me rewind that. Hold on a second. Was that just the cockpit? Now, you're not going to see the fruits of this change in the Persistent Universe until after the ship makes its debut in the upcoming Squadron 42. But I'll take any. Is that like a cue? Is that like a cue that I needed to listen to? Like the upcoming Squadron 42? Is that like a cue that it's going to come out? I mean. I don't know, or did or was it, or did he just word it? What do you guys think? By the way, what do you guys think of the new links of the Around the Verse? Here is a poll for you guys to take. I will put another poll on our YouTube channel. And I'm kind of curious. I'm going to report it in our Discord. Uh, go take that poll, and it's basically like, what do you think about the length of the Around the Verses? You know, like they used to be very long. Now, I kind of like personally the condensed versions of the Around the Verse. I know a lot of that's not the popular opinion. A lot of people like the longer ones. But I think as a content creator, I'm a little biased because I just like them when they're a bit more kind of direct. And then that's fun because then I can like riff off that, talk about it, see what's going on, get, get ideas from you guys. I don't know. Um, I'm sure that there will be an update on the state of Squadron 42 at CitizenCon. I think, Jeff, that there, that I think that would be pretty smart. This could be big. Like, this could be big. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just felt something there. Something, my gypsy radar went off when he said that. That was a little bit strange. Uh, they maybe need some kind of incentive by our side. Criticism and pushing questions at every occasion would be a start. Like DG doing uh, since a couple years. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Like, I'll tell you one thing that they that they desperately need to do. And what it is, is to plan things out better for their PR. Their PR, their, their promotions, right? 
their promotions and their marketing, which is primarily Sandy. And I'm not trying to be an asshole here. Sandy's a good person. But like, I don't even think Sandy gets to do her job properly because I think Chris sometimes kind of steps uh, over his bounds. And I think that's kind of Chris's mentality, right? Is Chris's mentality is always kind of very, I, I don't want to say oppressive because I don't think it's oppressive. But I think what it is is like, he likes the details. He likes to like make sure that everybody's doing it exactly the way he wants to do it. And sometimes I'm not sure that's the smartest thing, especially when it comes to marketing, especially when it comes to image, especially when it comes to branding, promotion. Like it's very important and it doesn't get talked about enough, I think, in our community. Like a lot of people need to voice up and say, hey, guys, you're not doing the best job at like representing yourselves. And, you know, they got a great YouTube channel. The content's really good. You know, the, the it flows in. I really appreciate them. I like the around the verses. Uh, you know, like I like the meet the de uh, meet the developers, meet the devs. I like that. Uh, I even like the reverse the verse. And, and, you know, like I like the fact that they're always pushing content to their YouTube channel. I think that's great. But what I what I don't like is like their appearance when it comes to like these events, like what just happened with the Citizen Con debacle. And it's happened a few other times in the past, too. And I don't want to get negative on it. But I'm just saying there needs to be some type of effort being put into their marketing department where Chris needs to lay back and let the people that he hired to do the jobs do the jobs. <laughs> uh, DG, we are going down the same rabbit hole. We know the CR has that, hey, I control this shit, so fuck off attitude. Says no. <laughs> yes, yes, we know. We know. Some people don't. Some people are new. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm just reiterating right now, Nori. Uh, gameplay and progress can be make up for, uh, can make up for much of marketing's transgressions. If the game has the content, a lot of times, right, Jeff, you know, that takes care of itself. And that is its best promotion is the actual content of the game. Absolutely right, Jeff. Um, Jared face is jokes. Yeah, like, like, this is great. The whole time I'm being serious right now. Look at Jared's face right there. This is great. Like people probably came into the room and they're like, this guy's talking here nonstop. And look at Jared's face. Just <laughs> Jared's trolling me right now. Jared's trolling the excuse me. I can to showcase one of the more storied ships currently in our development. What can I say? I like spaceships. <laughs> Meanwhile, here in our Los Angeles studio, work continues in White Box on building out the Anvil Hawk, a bounty hunting ship that was first introduced to the Star Citizen community during last year's holiday live stream. It's like a small the last year's scout ship stream, almost the, the way that it's... Don't talk about. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. But the cockpit set... They're doing, they're doing cooler stuff. The they're editing a little bit more. It moves into gray box modeling I like spaceships. The Anvil Hawk is being worked on by the same team that built my current favorite spaceship, the Anvil Terrapin. So you can be certain that we're going to be checking in on its development as it continues through the pipeline in the coming months, because I love these guys. Finally, the Aegis Hammerhead continues barreling its way towards its intended release in the upcoming Alpha 3.3, with work continuing on its VFX and damage dates. And I'm going to encourage all of you to tune in to Reverse the Verse Live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. UTC, for the premiere of the Aegis Hammerhead Ship Shape, Ooh. followed by an in-depth Q&A with designers and artists. If who I'm are home, to bring I'll stream it to life. Now, it's going to be your chance to have your questions answered live by team members and get your best look yet at the current state of the Aegis Hammerhead. And here's a hint just to hold you over. <laughs> Damon. Not only did it get bigger, big surprise, but it also got an additional second deck, too. So much room for activities. I beat you. So until tomorrow, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Jared. Finally, we're back at the Scramble Races. Recent adjustments to Gravlev have been a game changer with this mission type. Here's Ed Fuller with more. So the latest improvements that we've made to the Scramble Race feature are we have improved the lights for all ground vehicles. We've improved the durability for the Cyclone's wheels so that they stay on the vehicle and uh, they don't fall off so quickly. We've also made it so I love the lighting. I've said this so many times, but the lighting is on. It is on. Like the lighting gives you those feels. It does. They got the lighting down. But some of them are in the wrong position. They need to like adjust, the, especially the, the headlamp. Have they fixed that yet? Have they fixed the headlamp position yet? I can't remember. Can't rem I haven't even turned on my headlamp. I've been playing a lot of Star Citizen lately, and I don't think I've turned on my headlamp yet since I've been back. I need to do that to see if they fix the position of that. But the lighting is on lock. 
so that gravlevs are incapable of going into SEM mode, so they can't take off, they stay on the ground. It makes for a better racing experience. And we are working towards having the ability for passengers of dragonflies to be able to help out their pilot by uh, providing covering fire, and then also for the cyclones, for the passengers to do the same. Those races look like they're shaping up to be really fun, and we can look forward to seeing them hit the PTU reasonably soon. Yes, Alpha 3. We love people in the community that do community events. Like, these people that are doing these community events for Star Citizen right now in the game should be praised. I, I want to know these people so that we can shout it out that they're doing something positive for the community. More of the, of the positive things have to happen. More actions have to happen like these because the game should have more of a player-motivated player kind of vibe to it, right? I mean, that's kind of why I'm in it is because I wanted that kind of interaction so that it felt very real to me. And I, I think it's important that people who are players of Star Citizen, even right now in the testing phase, it's important that events are held. And I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start doing that for our community here because I think it's, it's, getting to t it's getting towards that time. You know, for a long time I was saying, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it yet. And I'm starting to feel like it needs to happen more because I've had some pretty cool moments in Star Citizen. And some people haven't been back to Star Citizen in a very long time. And so to bring them back into it and to have those moments with other people, I think would be kind of very cool. What's up, crazy? Welcome to the stream. I will not take your pool unless you buy me dinner first. <laughs> Damon, did you like it, dude? By the way, Damon is talking about this particular uh, pool here. Go go take it. If you're watching the stream, thank you very much for joining us. We're having a nice uh, Round the Verse review. This will be on my YouTube channel. You guys can check that out later. Lots of cool shit right over there. And let's watch some more around the verse. By the way, a giveaway also. Let me just post a couple links for new people in here because I think it's fair we get everybody in as we can. Tell your friends. Tell them what's up. And we're doing these around the verses now. This is three weeks in a row. So we're going to try and keep doing these. And uh, if I if I have a day where I'm like, ah, I don't think I can hit around the verse, I'll let everybody know in the Discord. So we're going to do a hell of a lot more of these because I'm having a good time with you guys. Let's let's see what the Evocati. Oh, the special Evocati. Oh, that, that special Evocati group. So special. It's limited edition Evocatis. Oh, that, you make a, a hell of a of an uh, uh, of an artichoke dip out of it. Point three features are gearing up to endure Evocati testing. Getting it into their hands as early as possible is an important step towards a wider PTU release. Yes, and as we mentioned last week on Reverse the Verse, this round of testing is a bit unique. We've split object container streaming out to its own build. OCS is a big technical challenge that's going to take more testing and attention than the rest of the features and improvements planned for 3.3. <laughs> and due to our date-based schedule, it has been split out, so it won't hold up the release. That means Alpha 3.3 will be released on October 10th at CitizenCon with new ships, features, and gameplay. You'll see things like FPS AI enemies for the first time and those scramble races we've seen in development making it into the game. Yes, we'll get OCS and all the content that comes with it, like Hurston and Lorville, live as soon as it's ready via a dedicated patch we're currently calling 3.3.5. You can look for that update on the roadmap tomorrow. And that just about does it for this episode. We'd like to thank our subscribers for sponsoring this and all of our shows. Yes, and of course, thanks to the backers for making the development of Star Citizen and Squadron 42 a reality. That's right. Until next time, we'll see you around, around the verse. I like them. I like that they're concise. Definitely dig it. So thank you for joining me here today. We're going to do more of these like I mentioned before. And uh, if you guys are enjoying these, you want more content on the channel, you want more Thanks streams. Thanks for watching for the latest and greatest. I sound just like Chris right now. Let me just let me just let Chris, you know, kick this off towards the end. And every time he says Star Citizen, just substitute the games and uh, anything that is Star Citizen related. Just like Chris, when he says that, just put in your head the games. <laughs>